know, we, we broke down the uh, first and second down packages, what they like to do on the early downs. I uh, haven't really gotten into third down yet. You know, taking it one day at a time and you know, what, we're, what we're doing from uh, seeing some of the tendencies that they have and uh, just going along. So it seems like sometimes when their offense might struggle it's because uh, the running back Gallman might not get the ball as much, at least statistically, when I was looking at the case. Do you guys see that? Or just how skilled our other guy is? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Wayne Gallman, man, he gets their offense going by his uh, – he sets the tone for him on offense. He runs the ball hard. And uh, likes to get downhill. Not a guy a real shifty guy or whatever. He can be, but he likes to get downhill and uh, get the yards that he can. But, uh, man, they got weapon, weapons all over the place. I think it's Scott, Mike Williams, uh, Heisman candidate, a quarterback, Wayne Goldman, uh, Leggett, the tight end. You know, they got some weapons, man. And they, and they know how to use them. How different is Goldman's running style than Mike? It seems like Goldman's a little taller guy, maybe. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just different body types, you know. Uh, you got like Gallman, upright, uh, fast guy who gets downhill hard. And uh, like Weber, you know, he's like a little bowling ball, man. He's in there hard to bring down, uh, hard to tackle. Once he gets going, it's hard to stop. Oh, what's your thoughts on Coach Nicole? Go to UC. Bittersweet, man. Uh, my guy's leaving. Just proud of him and everything that he's done so far. And he's blessed me. I mean, he's been able to guide me through all my blessings that I've been given here at Ohio State and uh, put me in the position where I am in today. You know, through the ups and the downs, he always stayed <coughs> on my side. And even the guys beside me, you know, uh, nurtured us and helped us become men. How did you, how did you find out? Uh, yeah, he got. I got a phone call from uh, I, I probably was one of the first guys to know, you know, uh, of course, his wife and Coach Sorry. Meyer, yeah. you know, those. But uh, I was one of the next guys that he called and actually told that he was going to take the job or whatever. So happy for him, proud for him, but we got a job to do. Yeah, what's, I mean, he's working two jobs right now, basically. What's kind of been like with him since that? Because you, know, you guys are in the playoffs. And he's, yeah. He's already took another job. Uh, Coach Lee, man, he, he's a guy that. Uh, Sticks to what he's gonna say. He told us that he's gonna give us 100% of what he's, what he can while he's here, and uh, he's been doing that so far. So I, I really don't see a difference in him, coaching wise. But you know, I, hopefully he does a great job at Cincinnati. He will do a great job. Rayvon, what do you remember as a recruiter? Was he any different than Coach other schools? Uh, you know, he always kept it real. Never fed you anything. Never uh, talked down about another school. Uh, Admitted, admitted the lows that was here at Ohio State, admitted the bad times they had here at Ohio State, and uh, never shied away from any questions that I had from him. And uh, he was always 100%, so that's what I remember. You guys have played some really good offenses, but I mean, you were talking about the talent Clemson posts. Is this, how big of a challenge is, is this group from what, you, what you've seen here? Uh, you know, they, they got ways to attack you from every part of the field, you know. Uh, can't really just focus on one guy because the, the quarterback can get the ball to anybody and uh, he can make all the throws and uh, a next level type guy. So you just got to be prepared for everything and uh, play your best game this season. Is it the best offense that you'll face this year? Uh, I won't know until after the game, but uh, you, they probably have the most, the most athletes and uh, one of the best quarterbacks what so you, far. What do you feel like the best offense that you've already faced so far is? The best offense that I've already faced. This year. Uh, sch schematics wise, Wisconsin, you know, they have they have some stuff schemed up for me personally, uh, us as defense. So for me, Wisconsin was uh, one of the tougher games for us. But uh, so is there anything you take from that game that maybe you help use to help get prepared for, for this one? Uh, yeah, man. Uh, for me individually, man, Wisconsin was kind of like that shot to me that. Uh, finally, I came to the realization that teams were going to try to take me out of the game. And uh, once I figured that they were going to start taking, try to take me out of the game, I got to find my uh, find my ways to go make plays and uh, really turn it on at, at, towards the end of the season. Does this feel a little bit like the Oklahoma game in terms of a team that obviously not in conference but a top ten opponent and not a lot of familiarity? I mean, we really didn't know what to expect going into Oklahoma. Uh, because we were, we were a young team, and you didn't know who we were 
on the road and all that type of stuff going on. But uh, towards the end of the season, now we know who we are as a team. We know how we how we respond to uh, adversity in games. So uh, hopefully we can get through this game and uh, win. And with uh, you know two years ago with you guys, there was a lot of talk about how it was chasing Alabama. Is it in any way like that, even though you know there obviously would be an opponent down the road? Uh, no, we, no, we're not really worried about what's next after this game. You know, this 16, 17 days till we play uh, Clemson. And uh, we're, that's all we're focused on right now. And if you feel like you guys have played in all these big games this season, have you guys played your very best game this season? Uh, we have not played a perfect game, and we will never play a perfect game, but uh, I, I still think there's room for improvement. Every, every position, every every guy on our team can improve in some way, and our coaches as well. So uh, there's no perfect game, but also there's uh, high expectations here. We expect everybody to play uh, play great games. Rico, y'all replaced eight guys on offense, starters, eight eight starters on defense. Are you are you a little surprised that you're sitting here right now, getting ready for the uh, college football playoff, knowing? Everything y'all replaced. I mean, what what just came right for this team? You think as the season went along? No, I'm not surprised uh, with any of our accomplishments, man. Because you know, uh, as a team, it takes a it takes a season to mature, and uh, that's what it, that's what happened to us. We went on the road to Penn State, and we we needed that shot, uh, that gut shot to help us get back to our grind, get mm -hmm. back to our work, get back to our craft, and come back here and uh, show the world that we're we are one of the best teams in the nation. Not many people were talking about us uh, week eight, but uh, you know we got we are back in the position of where we are, and we got to finish. Do you ever sit back and think about where this program is at right now? Y'all have lost like three games in three years. You made the playoff for the second time in three years, and the other time you went and won the Fiesta Bowl and finished in the top five. Just, just it's, it's kind of like the golden age of Ohio State football right now with what y'all have done lately. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, I wouldn't call it the golden age, <laughs> but I mean, we got a lot of history here. I can't really tell you all the history. It's so much, but uh, you know, we're, we're on an incredible run. I wish I wish I could have had a couple more Big Ten championships in my finger. Uh, I was, that's why I wouldn't call it the golden age, but uh, you know, we've done a great job so far of just staying the course, even though we do take uh, a loss or something like that to Virginia Tech. Last year to Michigan State and this year to Penn State. You know, once we take the loss, we get back here uh, in the confinements of our facility and go to work. Rayquan, do you think the guys are as hungry as they were in 2014 this year to get the championship? Yeah, you kind of got that feeling after uh, Penn State, you know. And, and just seeing them win the Big Ten championship game, uh, it kind of it uh, put a little fire under all of us, you know. We wanted to be there. Kind of lost the games for ourselves in, uh, at Penn State, and uh, they had they played an incredible game, had an incredible, incredible atmosphere, and uh, we just wish we could have been there to play the game. You spoke about Luke, uh, you know, UC job. What are qualities that make a great linebacker coach? If, 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 the, if the new hire was up to you, what would you be looking for? Uh, I would be looking for a consistent coach, somebody that doesn't change his ways uh, every year. You know, the, for the three years that I've been here, Coach Fickler has been preaching the same things that he's been preaching since I stepped on campus sure. to the point I am now. Uh, every time he sees me uh, miss a fault, I'm gonna take a bad step or something. Something in the fundamentals is lacking. Uh, he's a big stickler on fundamentals and uh, feet working where your eyes. And he's always been preaching that, and that's what I'm looking for in the linebacker school. Somebody who preaches, who practices what he preaches, and as it changes up, based on what he coaches. Well, a lot more time to prepare for this game since Clemson has a more high powered offense. Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool to have a little bit of off time too. You know, just outside of football, uh, not having to be here all day and be in class all day. Uh, it's just cool to relax a little bit. You know, actually just feel like a, a real football player in the NFL or something like that. Just out here playing football and having fun. A lot of people.